everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for the brand new video. A brand new video and familiar surroundings people as we return from a little trip in Germany back to the old office and back to talking about the SPFL as we're here to talk about Celtic 1. Rangers won. And you know something, maybe it was always going to be a draw this afternoon. It was probably fitting that it was actual draw because it just tells you the story of the entire season. It's all laid out on this game right here. Not only because of the circumstances. We know we've got one eye on Thursday, right? We've done a couple of rotations and that, right? That's not me being bitter. It's just facts, people, right? There's a chance to reach a major European final in a couple of days. Of course, there's going to be a couple of rotations and an eye on that. But I think this result here is the summary of the season, and it tells you where the two sides actually have been all year, right? Because you look at it, there's been five overall throughout the season. Rangers have won two. First one being the 29th of August with Big Phil Hillander. The other one being the semi-final we discussed and smiled about not too long ago where Big Starfield scored a decisive own goal in the second half of injury time. And then on the other side, you of course have Celtic winning two of those old firms. The first one being the move game from January to February the second where they convincingly, convincingly sorry, put us to the sword before, of course, coming to Ibrox and beating us 2-1 after being 1-0 down in the opening four minutes. That was a dagger in the heart, but that levelled up to 2-2 two, two in the season. And then you come into this one, who's going to take advantage? Who was the better side when the two sides met on the park? It finished a draw. And that just shows for me where the two sides actually are. That is a battle. Now, this is what I grew up with. Again, it's not been that way for a long time. It's either when Celtic's been dominating all the old firms, and then we had the year when we dominated all them. Now, it's back to what it always was. Trading wins and everything like that. And for me, it's a story of the season because it wasn't a one and loss between Rangers and Celtic. It wasn't a one and loss when they met each other. It was about what you could do against everyone else and that is the difference for me because Celtic were able and credit to them to beat the rest of the team and make sure they actually get the results. They always seem to find a way to win games when it was tight. We always seem to find a way to throw away points. You know what I mean by that? And that's how I go back and look at the season. That's why they'll be celebrating and enjoying themselves and everything like that. They knew. And that's why we go, right, it's sale, but we knew it's been coming. Now we move on to first and hopefully have some smiles to end the season. So that's all I wanted to say, ladies and gentlemen. For me, oh, this overall game right here just shows you where the two teams are. No one's pulled away from each other. No one's dominated the other. It's been won and lost versus the rest of the league where we've not been good enough and they have. But before we do go any further on with today's video and relive this game bit by bit and give you my opinions on how the game unfolded, I just want to kind of tell you right off the bat there's going to be no anger for me in this game. I'm not going to be slaughtering the manager or the players. Well, there'll be a player that gets mentioned quite a lot in the recap. And if you watch the game, you know exactly who will get mentioned. But I'm not sitting here fuming and foaming at the move thinking we've lost this. So if you're looking for an angry recap, if you're only coming here because you're singing now that you're winning, you're going to be bitterly, bitterly disappointed because what I saw from my players dug in and gave what they gave that actually made me pretty, pretty, pretty proud, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And if only we had... The same type of heart, determination, and that type of performance in this game all the way back in February the 2nd. We probably wouldn't be very dumb and glum when it comes to the actual league. But again, that's in the past. All we can talk about is this game of football right here. And for me, we've done a hell of a lot of good things in this game. And in my opinion, should have won it. And if you want me to prove that statement, strap yourselves in and let's get to the game recap then, shall we? Because going into this game, we saw the slight rotation that was actually Ryan Jack obviously coming out with an eye on Thursday night. The front three, sorry, being what it was. Ryan Kent, Joe Rebo pushed forward in a more central role and Takala on the right-hand side where we bit a threat to go after some fullbacks. So we knew what we were kind of wanting from this game and the way it started, if I'm honest with you, I was very, very positive about how we looked, the structure, how we were playing. I thought we were dominating the football. I thought Lundstrom again was bullying the Celtic middle of the park, winning the ball back, nipping it, quieting the crowd. And I mean, the first 15 minutes was all positive, apart from the time where Ryan Kent wins a 50-50 with Ralston, who's just, just, he's just a fucking alien. He just comes in there, he just tries to kick a boot. He's like, oh, I'm Celtic, blah, blah, love me, love me, please. And Ryan Kent does him again here, runs in behind them. He looks like he's running in to the actual box and then Barisic Barisic just comes in and takes the ball off Ryan Kent. Why? 
I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, but that's the best bit of defending Barris that she's done for four and a half freaking months. It's just unfortunate it was against her own player. And I'm going to be honest with you, when that actually happened, me and my pal Ryan was watching the game and everything like that, and I said to him, now that he's done that, just watch defensively, because you can just tell, you know what I mean, when things start positive for Barisic, it's usually a glorious game, he's such a confidence player, but when there's that mistake, especially early on in a game, he then has some iffy moments and excited to bleed in the side, because again, still, for the opening 20 minutes of this game, I thought it looked all positives for Rangers, and then Celtic's first attack again, their first shot again, as a striking blow, as they go down the left-hand side with Maeda, who was on t on side, sorry, for one of the few times this afternoon. But again, watch this video, and you'll see that really come into fruition. But it goes down the left-hand side, to be fair to Laddie here, this is very good skill. He gets onto the left foot, it drives past Connor goes and creates the gap, puts in a lovely ball, can't take anything away from it. But just Barisic's overall defending here is so poor as he lets Jota just nip in front of him and tap it into the back of net. Again, if only Barisic could defend Jota like he defended Ryan Kent six minutes earlier. But again, they're very loud when they're winning and now that they were winning, they were loud, they were getting into it, they were enjoying themselves. And again, Rangers didn't, just didn't respond to that type of pressure well again, in my opinion, because where they look dominating on the football opening... 20 minutes, it just faded away and Celtic then started to look good. I mean, Barisic just passed, there's nobody anywhere near him in a blue shot to aim it. He passes it straight to a Celtic player. Thankfully, the touch is very poor. It bounces off um, the, the Celtic player. It drops the Scotty Arfield who then turns and does a back pass blind. And you never do that. That's just switching off. And eventually the ball goes to, I think, Callum McGregor and... I'm not sure which Celtic player it tried, I'm really sorry, I'm trying to remember it, but it's an early cross anyway for Jota at the back post, who's on his own, but he balloons it over the freaking bar. Again, no uh, easy chance or anything, but it was a half chance given away, just the silly defensive needless errors from Scotty Arfield and Barisic, and if we track that back all season... I've said that a lot. But six minutes later, after a bit of the game dragging out and no much quality, we got a little break as Starfelt had the ball and he just passes it straight to Sakala. Again, very similar to the Barisic one. No pressure him, just switches off defensively. And that's probably why some people didn't rate him over the other side as he has those moments. But he gives it straight to Sakala and then Sakala has got the ball. He's running at two centre-back. Starfelt, Carter Vickers. We have Joe Rebo in the middle. Ryan Kent. On his own, it's a three on two counter attack. I'm saying, oh, 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 here we go. We've got the fastest player on the part with the ball with two easy passes. Sakala so runs it out for a goal kick. How? I don't know, but it happened. But where we just blew that opportunity with just sheer silliness in every single aspect. It was then time for the linesman to get silly here because in the 40th minute, Maeda again five yards offside. I mean, it's not even close. See being onside, I just didn't get it. Go back to the semi-final. How many yards he was allowed to be onside for setting up Hatati who rolled it wide in that game? He's so far offside here again. It's baffling that it was given to be played on. But anyway, a ball in behind for him. He's six, seven yards offside. He runs down the wing. He picks out Kyogo. It should be slapped into the back in it. But, but Kyogo balloons the sitter right over the freaking bar. And I think... It was given as an offside for Kyogo being offside. And again, I'm not sure if he was, but it was a bona fide sitter anyway. But aye, linesman howler, then a howler from Kyogo. But the howler dominoes just continued because linesman for Kyogo to next Calvin Bassey. And this doesn't happen very often to the laddie, but it's a short, silly goal kick. And I, I mean, you know my opinions on this. I absolutely hate it. But we force the ball to Bassey. Maeda just running all the time, you'll never see him like this, or you see him like this, and he's constantly gone, so he puts pressure on Calvin Bass, who tries to find, is it John Lundstrom in the middle of the park, but he gives it straight to a Celtic player, the ball then goes to Jota, and here, I've just got to hold my hands up, see this is just sheer quality, it's the outside of the fit, he puts it right on a sixpence to the back post, Maeda is right there, and thank the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, that he absolutely shits himself, well that would have been 2-0, a very harsh 2-0, but it could have been because the ball drops in to his head. He thinks McGregor's going to come out and nail him. So he does that instead of just putting his head through it. And it's that motion that actually allows it to go wide. And I am sitting back going, how on earth have we done what we've done over the last 
30 seconds. There was no changes in the second half, there was chances for redemption for the players and we actually started off very, very positively, winning a corner just a minute and a half into the second half. It's a better one from Tavernier, it's actually an end error. Sakala, he does it. I know there's claims for handball, but it's never a handball. The hand's like here, never ever a handball, but it drops the corner Golton, who's volley is balloons at the bar. But as it has been about a minute and a half since the last Maeda offside, let's talk about the 54th minute. And again, these are the chances that we were lucky not to be punished on or anything like that. They shouldn't have even been allowed to happen as the ball comes in to the box from a short set piece. It hits off a Celtic player quite luckily. It deflects right into the path of Maeda, who balloons it over the bar. And this is the type of chances that people are throwing at us, saying, oh, how lucky were you that these weren't scored? The boys two or three yards offside. Again, people, honestly, is he playing a different level of FIFA and he turns the offsides off or something like that? I mean, these are clear and obvious offside decisions again, but for whatever reason, the linesman and the referee miss it. And I thankfully, my era did as well because that's another one he's been gifted by the officials and another one he's gave straight back to us by no being able to hit the freaking target. But anyway, moving away from that, absolute nonsense. Roll on next season with VAR, people, that will be absolutely lovely. There was a triple substitution for Celtic in the 60th minute. Giamakis came on, uh, Beaton came on, so that was kind of advantage. Rangers, and I believe the other player that came on Actually, oh, it was Rogic. Sorry, I have had to actually go double check that. I do apologise. That wasn't even me being a line or being a dickhead, but I genuinely forgot it did come on. He never offered anything when it did come on. But we also made a couple of changes at the same time as we brought off Stephen Davis. Honestly, just love that man with every fibre in my being. On comes Ryan Jack. And also, Joe Rebo was withdrawn, which moves to Kala, now central. It didn't really work on Thursday night, but we'll see how it goes in this one. And on comes Scotty. Scotty, right? The two former Aberdeen players jogged on at the same time. And they made an impact right away. One where Ryan Jack, within 30 seconds of beyond, sniffs out the danger twice. Nipping in in front of Maeda and then nipping in in front of Jaw to stop shots on goals. Very big for Jacko, but that's what you're expecting from him. That's why he's our best defensive mind in the team. And then Scott is right in first involvement was this kick up a ball straight his hand and give Celtic a dangerous free kick and I went oh no Scotty didn't let it be another day less I can't handle another day less but it wasn't another day like this people because just a couple minutes after that we start zipping the ball about I think Scott Wright's involved Tav's involved goes to Arfield comes back it's a ball drilled at Sakal and Sakal's first touch is what you're expecting just just a guess just a guess but thankfully it drops right to Ryan Kent who just has the composure to just stop it for a second, wait, find the pass to Sakal who's done well to continue his run and then here, people, is just a wonderful shot with the left fit out wide where he's better and he's freer and I think it suits him better. Wonderful goal in the inside of the post, Joe Hart beat at his near post, again just showing if he actually hit son on target and put a wee bit on the sides, he's still the Joe Hart of the last few years. We didn't do that enough in the second half, but on this occasion we asked some questions and I were back in the game, Sakala scored, let's freaking go New Rangers, let's go and get the second goal, we probably deserve the way the second half has unfolded, and we nearly did people, there was a couple of half chances for Sakala, couple heaters and everything like that from set piece and you're thinking right, it's almost there, it's almost there, Celtic were offering nothing in the second half, they didn't get a shot on target or anything like that, the chances that they had were clear and obvious offsides, I know they were shouting for a handball at one point but no, they just had nothing going forward I thought it was Rangers with the questions, again Lundstrom nipping in, winning the ball, bullying them and everything like that, spring in, counter attacks and then the last 15 minutes of the game happened and honestly this has aged me significantly people because first it's a decent ball in from Arfield to Sicala who does very well to hold off Carter Vickers, he's not the easiest opponent to spin at all but he spins him, drifts away, he's 1v1 one, one one versus Joe Hart but it's the lack of composure and I don't know it's just, it's just lashes at it. Honestly, it's a much, much easier chance than the one that he scored, but that's the player that he actually is, people. When he's no got time to think about things, he's better. He's very reminiscent of Kenny Miller, if you remember those. You know what I mean? If Son was instinctual to Kenny Miller, he'd put it in the back of net, but if he had five seconds to think about it, he would usually roll it wide or hit the goalkeeper. Again, I'm not saying he's exactly the same player. Kenny's a wee bit more clinical when it comes to it, or a better finisher overall, but that's who he reminds me when it's... Instinctual, he's putting away when he's got time. 
Eeyore thinks that in this one, it's just poor as he hits it straight at Joe Hart and really, really lets them off with it. And I thought that was going to be the chance that we would regret not winning this individual game. But it was not. And you know, the cap of destiny is coming down right now because the last 10 minutes of this game is stupid. People. It just, it's just dumb, people, because the chances that we have in the last 10 minutes and miss... Is everything. It's what's been wrong with the entire freaking season. The first one, brilliant work for Scotty, right? And you know what I mean? He was awful on Thursday night, right? That could have been, we could be talking about a wee redemption arc there, and he deserves to have it because he just burns away. Is it Starfield? He leaves in a death. Like, I mean, he was all out of the place again, but Scott Wright runs away from him, gets his head up, picks out Scott Arfield five yards out, and Arfield, where I get what he's trying to do. But it's just so lackadaisical with the finish. You know what I mean? Absolutely bury it. Rip the back of the net off. You're five yards out. He tries to just kiss it. He gives it straight at Joe Hart, who's able to get the save. It bounces out about, I don't know, eight yards out or something like that. And then Jacko tries like a kind of, I don't know, like, what he's got a jumping volley trying to get something on it just to try and bend it around the defender. But he can't get on and on it. But what a chance that was for Scotty Arfield. And then, 85th minute of this game happens, and I'm getting sad thinking about it. Again, Scott Wright's involved in this, Arfield's involved in this, he gets a toe to our boy Sakala after winning the ball originally from corner goal to Giamakis throws himself doing like a sack of tight. He's honestly, he's just doing there, holding his head, never a foul or anything. The ball goes to Scotty, he slips it through to Sakala. He's 1v1 again, this time he's got Kent coming, although the pass isn't really there because the defender's there, and I'm thinking, hit it now, hit it now, son. But he keeps running and running and running and running and narrowing his own angle, exactly the same as Tanadice a couple months ago. Do you remember with Diallo, how he narrowed the angle, angle and then hit the post? Where Diallo hit the outside of the post and it went out. So Cal hits the inside of the post and it rolls out. I mean... When the luck's no way, you people, when you didn't get the rub of the green, there is nothing you can do in football because you can be the better team, you can play better in a game, but it's better to be lucky than good. And the last 15 minutes of this game shows it all, ladies and gentlemen, because even if we had a tiny bit of luck, we'd have won that game. But no, we hit the inside of the post and it rolls back out and it doesn't fall to anybody. Of course it's no fault to anybody. It goes right beyond everyone and that was it from the game in terms of chances created. I want to shout out Diallo, by the way, really quickly. Came on at the game, a couple of wee iffy questions about that, but the 88th minute, superb for the young laddie because it's a corner, poor one from us. It looks like a Celtic counter-attacking opportunity, but Diallo takes one from the team, charges the boy down, accepts the yellow card, like that very much, and about 30 seconds later, he actually wins a 50-50 with Callum McGregor as well. I think he nutmegs him or knocks, uh, knocks it beyond him. Whichever one, he wins the 50-50, but unfortunately, Scotty Arfield didn't fancy the through ball. He turned around and passed it backwards, but they were two big moments for Diallo, and again, it's no much for the young laddie, but let's remember, he's still a young laddie, and hopefully we see a wee bit Miriam, because I just want him to have a wee moment or two, so he thinks back to his time at Rangers with positive thoughts, so, aye, he was very good though in terms of football perspective, picking up that yellow card, the shit house of the award goes to him this afternoon, but that was game, set and match, ladies and gentlemen, there was only two minutes added, despite seven substitutions being made, and they say for every sub you add 30 seconds on, so you can do the math on that bad boy, but... Aye, that was game, set and match. There was another awful linesman call just before it where it didn't really result in a chance. That's why we never spoke about it. But Carter Vickers is doing on the deck, lying down, spread eagled. And somehow Sakala, who's, I don't know, a yard in front of him, gets flagged for offside. How? I don't know, people, but aye. Officiating. Roll on next season. Roll on VAR. And aye, considering the fact we were missing Morelos, Roof. Ramsey, Hollander, Balogun, and we rested Ryan Jack for the majority of uh, the game. Again, going to Park Ken getting a 1-1 as a decent wee momentum builder going in to Thursday night. And aye, I'll see you on Wednesday because I'm absolutely buzzing for that, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game. What did you think? Who impressed you? And how are you feeling ahead of Thursday night? Make sure you let me know down in the comment section below. I'll be seeing you on Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.